Let's listen to what the urban data longer has to say about potassium in lawns. You did your soil test. It said you're low in potassium. What can you do to raise those levels? Now that is about as straight to the point as you can get when it comes to how potassium is over applied in, in turf grass management. They go to a soil test and, and how many of the past video or past papers have I gone over where in the paper, it says Melik 3 soil test apparently is not an appropriate extraction for potassium in these sand soils. The, the paper yesterday with Dr. Woods um, said it in a softer language. The Destin Gillard paper, I believe, concluded that. The Beer paper concluded that, that these tests are not particularly useful when the soils contain iron, uh, potassium bearing minerals. And the first thing out of the bag, you took a soil test and it says you're low, so you're going to apply it. This is what I'm trying to communicate to people when it comes to nutrient management is soil testing can be useful in some cases but this is the way people use it and this is not useful taking a soil test looking at a number and going yep you need to apply potassium that's not useful it's not it's not based on evidence okay there are clearly some cases where that value on a soil test with potassium can be useful to guide you but this is not the way <laughs> just blows me away well it's your lucky day because in this video i'm going to show you a couple of easy ways that you can add potassium to your lawn potassium plays an important role in the life cycle of your lawn yeah so this often and th this is this concept or this um mindset it permeates marketing and i want to I want to spend a little time on this uh, to see if you all can catch the flaw. Okay, so let me take back it up about five seconds and see if you can catch the flaw that just is prim and in my opinion primarily responsible for the over application in well, in this case of potassium. Let's listen to it last five seconds. Potassium plays an important role in the life cycle of your lawn. It gives your lawn the strength it needs to fight off stress, drought, and disease. And potassium also helps in better nutrient and water uptake, while also helping synthesize proteins and starches. The symptoms... Okay, so this is epistemology. We're learning critical thinking skills, okay? That's sort of an underlying objective of the channel. And what he said was, potassium plays an important role in the life cycle of your lawn. I, I'm not sure if you would ever, in our, going back to two or three hundred years to the point where, I mean, whenever potassium first became known as a, as a plant essential element, whenever that was, say a hundred years ago, 200 years ago, when I can't even remember the date. I don't I'm not sure you'll find a scientist anywhere who would disagree with that. Potassium plays an important role in your life cycle of your lawn. That's the red herring. And, and I, want, I want to use that as an example, and I've used it before, where when someone says this, of course it's true. I mean, no one's going to disagree with that. Potassium plays an important role. But that's not the point. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in, and what I hope, you're interested in is not potassium plays an important role it's what does applied potassium do what does the potassium i paid for and hired guys to go out and spread or gals to go out and spread and i'm talking to my clients and charging my clients for or the golf pro and i'm including potassium or the the members of the you know whatever athletic club or the coaches or the players that I'm telling them, hey, I'm doing this. What does the applied potassium do? It's a very, very common red herring. And, it's, and, and what happens is, and at least in my experience, is that when someone says that, you go, oh, okay, well, that's true. I agree with that. And then you start listening to them and you start going down the wrong road. And then the next thing he says, it's human nature. You're kind of inclined, well, okay, that's probably true too. And next thing you know, you're down this road that had nothing to do with the direction we need to go. The direction we need to go is what occurs with the applied nutrient. 
Okay. So we continue. I just wanted to make sure that's clear. And I've, I've shown that before, but it, you can, I could pull up 15 videos, probably 115 videos that use that same, probably unknown, probably un, they don't even realize what they're doing. Uh, but marketing oftentimes does. They're just, oh, well, this, this is, it's useful. Nitrogen is a useful element. Yeah, I know it is. Potassium is useful. Yeah, I know it is. Okay. I'm not, I don't care about that. <laughs> what does the applied nutrient do? Keep going. The symptoms of a possible potassium deficiency in your lawn include slow growth or poor root and stem development, your lawn becomes more susceptible to temperature changes, and the grass's immunity to disease, harsh weather and drought decreases, and chlorosis, a oh. yellowing of the leaves can occur. But basically, potassium deficiency looks a little bit like at the beginning, at least, a little bit like tip burn. The tip of it, um, the tip of the leaf gets a little scorched, and then the ribs or the margins of the leaf become chlorotic. And in severe cases, they turn from yellow even to brownish if it gets really bad. And the middle part of the leaf will still remain green or greener. So it'll go from green and it'll fade into yellow. And in worst case scenarios, it'll actually start to actually scorch the edges of the leaf, and the tip of the leaf will be scorched. That occurs on older leaves first. Whether it's St. Augustine grass or bent grass or what or tall, tall fescue or whatever, the potassium is very mobile, so it'll be moved from older leaves into newer leaves as they emerge from the crown. But the but anyway, the, the the grass will generally look a little chlorotic. But if you start looking at the leaves and you pull back the 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 runners and you look at what number the leaf is from the oldest to the newest, it'll occur on the oldest leaves, as will other nutrient deficiencies. It's not just potassium. But the leaves edges will be scorched with the tips being a little bit chlorotic, even brown in severe cases. Okay, that's a that's a pretty common sign of potassium deficiency. So don't go by what YouTubers say about potassium deficiencies. I mean, they you generally I, I haven't really come across a, an explanation that's accurate yet, and I didn't see it in this particular video either. We continue. There is also a direct relationship between soil acidity and potassium availability. So he just showed the pH diagram that I massacred about a month ago. <laughs> that might even be the exact same diagram I used on the channel, where he shows the changes in pH, uh, changes in nutrient solubility. Or actually, I think the diagram says nutrient availability as pH changes. We don't really want to use that much at all. That diagram we don't want to use at all. But we don't, and we want to be aware that nutrient availability or solubility does change with pH. But the plant ha plays a major role in that. So even in cases where the solubility of an element might be low, the uptake of that element from the plant might be high. And I went in those two articles, those two episodes I went over a month or so ago. I provided clear examples of how that can occur, and and, and it's published in the literature. So you know. I don't really take too much um, offense or I don't, I don't really um, feel that then the people that are showing that, P, that pH diagram, I don't, I don't worry about it too much because they just don't know. Oftentimes many, many scientists don't know, uh, but don't, don't hold a lot of confidence in this pH diagram. I would just, the best thing you can do is to actually take it and use it to test your shredder, your paper shredder and your, and your, in your kitchen or your your office and just shred all those diagrams and, and just that's really the best use for it use it for some stuffing in your christmas gifts or something other than that that ph diagram is mostly useless we continue soils with low ph under 6.2 will not only inhibit potassium uptake by the plant but many other key nutrients too yeah that's a that's a common uh opinion that's just his opinion the evidence doesn't support that in many many cases so don't worry about it too much I did do a video earlier on my channel about the importance of pH to your lawn. So once you've watched this video, go yeah. check that one out. I, I might Potassium go do that. <laughs> your lawn comes in a couple of forms and both are used in fertilizers. There's muriate of potash and there's sulfate of potash. So what are the differences between the two? Potassium chloride or muriate of potash is the least expensive of the two, but it has a high salt index and chloride content. Potassium sulfate or sulfate of potash is considered a premium quality potash. 
and contains two key ingredients for your lawn, potassium and sulfur. SLP is not a naturally occurring mineral and must be produced through resource intensive yeah. methods and processes, which makes the SLP fertilizer's price higher because of its superior ability in making plants more resilient without adding extra salt to your soil. Well, that's completely nonsense. That's complete nonsense without adding extra salt. I mean, SLP is a salt. ACL is a salt. I mean, you're going to add salt one way or the other. It's just you're going to add, you have a much less risk, much lower risk of causing salt problems or burn when you're using SOP because the salt content's lower, but you're adding salt. That's what I'm saying. They just say these things. They don't know if it's true. He does go to the application and he shows one of our uh, common products, which I, honestly, I would never in my lifetime ever buy a product. From, from this company, not because the product is a bad product. The cost is so far beyond reasonable. I don't know how in the world people get convinced to spend money. It, I, and I bought one just the other day because it's a research project. I'm using it for research, so I'll do it for that. But to spend that on my lawn is absolute madness. And I'm gonna show you what he, which, uh, which, which product he actually uses a couple of ways you can add potassium to your soil the first option you have is using a fertilizer so he's using he's showing on the video for those listening the stress blend from yard mastery there is absolutely nothing unique or special about most of these fertilizers i don't care who you buy it from every now and then you'll find some proprietary coating or something that's mostly marketing agronomically has very little difference between urea or ammonium sulfate or just regular sulfur coated urea but it's all the same stuff you're all getting it from the same manufacturers it's coming from israel or it's coming from canada or it's coming from florida or it's coming from china or it's coming from somewhere on barges it's all the same stuff okay and there's a difference in how they blend it and sometimes they screen the, the fines out and the the, the the larger products out some people spend a little more time in the in the just in the blending of it to make it a little cleaner, but it's all the same stuff. God knows why someone would spend forty dollars for eighteen pounds of just nitrogen and potassium. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would do that. I mean, you can call anybody up, any of these Site One stores or any of the the Harold stores or Howards or any of the distributors. They don't really sell to homeowners directly, but if you call them up and ask for a fifty pound bag, I'm sure they sell it to you. Okay, I don't know why they would you would do this but i mean whatever it is what it is but he's showing the stress blend from yardmaster that has potassium included in the analysis the second option that is available to you is to use straight mop or sop the use of straight sop and straight mop is unwise and i've shown many publications why that is uh, potassium uptake is very um, consistently connected to nitrogen applications um, so we don't really want to go down the road of putting out, um, straight potassium, unless you have some sort of very specific, unique case, because we've found that a couple things, one, you're probably going to apply many, many, many times more than you ever, than the plant can actually take up and you apply straight K and two, the uptake of whatever K you applied is going to be reduced greatly in the absence of any nitrogen application. So it, I doubt very seriously if anybody in your lifetime will ever actually have a confirmed response to potassium, a positive response, it's unlikely. But if you're going to see a response, you're going to see a response when you apply potassium at about half the rate of nitrogen. In some rare cases, it might be a one-to-one -one rate, rate to nitrogen in some really rare putting green situations. But usually it's about a two to one in decay. Any response you'd see from, from potassium, which I doubt you'd see any, but if you did, it's going to come, it's going to be maximized at that ratio of in, in decay of, of about two to one. I, I appreciate the people's interest in trying to help other people by putting it on YouTube, but honestly, you're not helping. You're, you're, you're messing things up. Just, unless you know what you're talking about, just go about your day. Let the experts be experts. You know, Let the scientists be scientists. And if you want to talk about sharpening your your blades and you know putting you know normal stuff in your lawn and fixing stuff up, that's fine. But when we talk about the science, the the nutrient response, you know the the likelihood of seeing value in your application, uh, I would not go to YouTube for that.